Hey, my name is Jorb. I love gear. I'm here with the Dreadbox Nymphes and a bit of a laptop on screen, uh, and my screen is recorded. Also, hopefully that's covering up this side of the screen, or it will now. <laughs> but I am going to update my Nymphes. Version 2 of the firmware just came out. There's a few features that are really exciting. Uh, polyphonic aftertouch, or MIDI polyphonic expression in general. I don't have any... Um, MPE keyboards, so I can't show you that. I'm sorry, the hydrosynth is already gone. Uh, a few others, small changes, improvements. They change shift behavior, which I'm curious to see what that really turns out to be. And this first bug fix, BC envelope scratching, is really, really exciting to me because that's something that bothered me about using this. And if that's fixed, then we're in good shape. So there is a download link that gives you a zip file that I have already downloaded. And there are a few uh, PDFs. There is this PDF that breaks through, or excuse me, breaks down all the changes really specifically, uh, which is awesome. They talk about how to send out presets, which is good, because I can do a patch bank for this now. And my favorite part, honestly, breaking down the SysX to this level helps people like me, because now I can know, okay, this is the part of the SysX I need to change if I want to send these to a different bank or um, to a different preset to help me manage those without any other software. So that is wonderful. There is... Also, this PDF that breaks down how to do the firmware updates, and they describe it with a program called Bohm Send SX, um, which I downloaded and I will use. I wouldn't normally, and you can use anything that sends SysX, but I'm going to follow their instructions uh, exactly the same if I'm going to show people how to do it. But I'm going to pull up this Bohm Send SX, and it says go to Options, go to Settings, and set these according to the following picture. Turn off split long messages. Let's see, is that the only difference? Actual MIDI speed, very fast, no throttling. Size 9, <laughs> font career new, yes, that is what I really thought so. Okay, so it looks like the only things you need to change are turn off split long messages and turn your MIDI speed to very fast. Double checking, yep. I can't believe they didn't recommend a different font. But let's hit apply. And then we plug the USB in the Nymphes while holding menu and save. If I can find it. This isn't a USB I can flip over. These are cycling. I can hear the reverb, actually. Strangely. Uh, and that is what it calls bootloader menu. When the LEDs of menu save and shift flashing in a sequence, you are now in bootloader mode. Great. In the Bohm Send SX window, click on the MIDI out tab and select Nymphis bootloader and click on file open and I'm going to go to that unzipped folder which Nymphis v2 is the sysx file we're looking for you're now ready to upload the firmware is that the whole message it's not very much press send on boom this is all lighting up solid. The LEDs will stay lit and start flashing simultaneously when the message will be translated. Transmitted? Oh, good. This is not responding. I hope it crashed. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Sent. That looks like a different amount than they show. That is a different amount of bytes than they have in their little description. I don't know if that's that big of a deal. And... Oh, it's calibrating now. <laughs> I can hear it. When you hear it doing this, like the voice is kind of rising up, that's it calibrating each of the voices. So I'm going to let it go through that. Okay, that all finished. We're back. Alrighty, and I'm going to pull up the list of changes. Okay, Polyphonic Aftertouch I can't show you. Really wish I could. Preset, Import, and Export. So let's see how this works. Menu, select 7, press Shift, and Menu. The menu button will flash. Okay, and so with the Wave Slider, we go between just the one preset we're on or everything. And the Save button will remain lit if you're in the current flash if you're on all so this is current that is all and we press the save button once 
to send it out. And I'm not going to start OBS again <laughs> because I didn't already, but that's how you send out your presets. I hit menu to get out of here. Uh, you can replace the factory presets not on the panel at all, but you can send a different sysx file. Which is cool. MIDI channel learn. MIDI <laughs> Nymphes can be set to any MIDI channel except 1 to 7 with the use of MIDI learn. Navigate to the MIDI channel by pressing 1, selecting 7, pressing menu. We'll flash. We're in the MIDI channel menu. While in that menu, the unit is a MIDI learn with Omni mode. Okay, so if I change my keyboard to, say, 10. Oh, that's what they put in the example. <laughs> Set up your keyboard on channel 10. Press any key. If I get out of here, we'll stay on channel 10. That's awesome. That is actually a really, really smart implementation, too. They didn't have to add any additional menus. It's just what you send to it while um, you're in the existing menu. So that's great. Scaled input mode, a relative mode for the sliders, is now added for easier control. Setting allows changing the slider based on the current value rather than jumping to the current position of the slider. Uh, menu, 7, shift, menu. What is that? 3? One, two, three. All the way at the top should be this new scaled. Our preset to start with. Has our cutoff about halfway through. And as I understand it was scaled, even though I'm way down at the bottom. It's scaled so that the full travel of this I'm only ever moving positively, right? If I'm moving the fader up, it will move up relative to how much space is left, right? So let me show you, hmm, what's a good example? Let's put it almost all the way at the bottom and we'll load it. Right, as I move up, it doesn't jump to where I was, doesn't catch it in the middle, just also opens up. And I bet if I do save while it's all the way up, and then put this, hmm, let's say somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I load this. I won't be able to move it up at all. But even if I'm not all the way up, I start moving down, we'll move down. So your change of the fader is always going to be change in that same direction. And you won't catch up until you make it all the way to the top or the bottom. And then once you do, then you're locked in. Uh, what you see is exactly what you're doing. I like that, uh, but I think it's a little more confusing because I'm used to jump. So I am going to go back to menu, seven, shift menu, three, and turn that back down to jump. And then menu. And then hit load just to make sure I got it. Yeah, as soon as I move the fader, it jumps to the real position on there. Cool. And I'm going to uh, load this. Great, there you go. I think that's an interesting option. I don't know that I'll change it. Shift button behavior changed, which I've talked about already. If you just hit it once, it's latched. And to hold it, you just hold it. The double press isn't working like it used to. I love that. You have exactly as much control over it. I can see it taking a second to get used to. How short is the shortest? It seems to be about a half second <laughs> for holding it. No, even less. Yeah, that's great. I don't see that being an issue at all. Now it's just quicker to go between. But also
also something I will be forgetting. I guarantee it. <laughs> CC transmit on preset load. So every time you load a new preset, the positions of the faders will get sent out. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What, uh, like uh, Tim Shoebridge, his project with the controller, I wonder if that has implications for it in its current implementation. It probably would. Anyway, CC list is changed. Does not make a big difference to me. Notes off and all sounds off added. I like that. I like that reverb is a destination. I think implementing it through CCs is kind of cumbersome for a dollars person like me uh, without some good dedicated CC controller. I could, I know, set it up in the MPC, but if I'm not sitting down to do dramatic sound design or complicated sound design, I'm not going to take the time to do that. Back the next day, I felt bad about not showing that. I'm here with my MPC hooked up to actually show you how to uh, set up modulation routings uh, to the reverb parameter, and also how to use CCs in general. But to make sure you're set up to accept CCs, we go to menu, then seven, uh, then shift menu. And as you click through, shift will tell you the status of these. And I think it's number five, yep. So many CCs are five. And so shift on the left and save on the right are telling us if we will react to or respond to incoming messages and if we will send messages out. So I'm just gonna turn on accept incoming messages. So then you hit menu. And now CCs I send will be responding. Wonderful. And so I just have cut off there for fun, but let's set up a little bit of reverb. That is menu three. Okay, after touching on the clock, you go to menu one, two, three for reverb. Let's turn the shit up. There we go. There's our sound. You know what, though? I think I'm going to put even just mix on aftertouch. Only mix. So to do that, it takes two MIDI CCs, and I've got the parameter list next to me because I don't exactly remember them. Mod source selector is CC number 30. If I go to 30, then I set that to what is aftertouch? The fourth one, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's set that there. And then we want to, so now we've set our source, right? It says it's aftertouch is what we've chosen for our source. And I want to send that to uh, the reverb mix, which is 89, 89, all the way. So as I press deeper on the pads, in comes the reverb mix. Wonderful, that works great. Let's do something even more obvious as well. Let's do size with it which is 86. If I'm really light, we'll almost have none. Cool. There you have it. That's not so hard, is it? Back to the content. <laughs> Mod wheel can be used for controlling LFO amount on pulse width rather than just controlling its initial value. I like that. There's our square. And tap. There's our pulse width. And if I want to change the mod wheel, so I get out of shift, menu, let's go to one, two, three, four for the mod wheel. And then we shift. Oops. <laughs> yep, there we go. Uh, da, 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 da. Great, so let's turn that off. Yeah, awesome change, really, really like that. Again, it's sort of a slick implementation. I don't know if that now means, that might now mean you can't use the mod wheel to just straight up increase your pulse width uh, without some other tricks. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something or just not thinking of it right now, but I do like that change. A shortcut for a global settings reset, which I will not do. 
uh, which is great because digging through these menus and you saw what I did changing the wave slider. If at some point you say, yeah, maybe I changed something I didn't mean to, I'm not sure what it was. Very easy to get back there and change it. VCA envelopes, scratching elements fixed. I still kind of hear them. I don't know if they're less loud than they were. But I definitely still hear it. So I'm going to compare to the before video and I'll let you know. Here we go. You know, maybe it got a little better. But I still notice it. That's kind of frustrating, but that's okay. Uh, that doesn't make this unusable by any stretch of the imagination. But there are certain sounds. Here's a really example. I'm recording this after. I, I've, my first impression was I could still hear some of the clicking, but I'm, I'm being more specific. I'm playing with the envelopes a little bit more. I definitely think it's better. I'll load that. Okay. Yep. It. I still notice it. I definitely still hear it, but that's okay. I'm not gonna. I don't know what the bug <laughs> for voice mode hanging notes was, but there you go. I'm gonna stop my OBS recording because it's already gonna be so much for me to dig through. Uh, this was kind of quick and off the cuff. I really like Dreadbox. I really like a lot of these changes. Uh, I'm I'm sad or disappointed that this VC envelope. VCA envelope scratching is not the fix I thought it was. That's the only thing that didn't really meet my expectations. Everything else is actually really, really impressive. And ongoing support for a synthesizer is a really, really important thing. So to know that it wasn't just let's get this out and let the problems be the problems. They listen to feedback. These are some of these things are things I mentioned. Some of these things are uh, I know Loop Pop specifically. I think describes the exact uh, behavior we have with the shift function now. So good on you, Dreadbox, for making all these changes. The Nymphes is even more powerful than it once was. So thanks for watching. My name's Jorb. I love gear. Subscribe if you aren't. Thank you so long. Hope to see you in the next one.